Are you wondering what to do if your identity is stolen? I want you to know you're not alone. It's a question I get all the time, and having been a victim of identity theft myself, I know firsthand that unfortunately, identity theft is scary, it's overwhelming, and it's all too common. First, breathe deep. We're gonna get through this. Keep watching the video and follow the nine steps I'm about to outline here to help you get a handle on things. I've also turned the content of this video into a helpful checklist that you can use if your identity is stolen, and you can find that checklist in the video description below. It will also help you even if you are simply looking to prevent identity theft so make sure you check it out either way. If your identity has been stolen, you are gonna feel a very strong urge to act now. But I want you to breathe deep and think carefully. Why do you think your identity has been stolen? This question is very important because there are a variety of phishing schemes out there that are designed to whip you into a frenzied state, a panic state, a state in which you are prone to reveal personal information to an identity thief. So if you think your identity has been stolen because you've received an intimidating email from PayPal or because you got a phone call from somebody purporting to be from the IRS about unpaid taxes, pause, stop, and breathe. Never respond to these emails, texts, or phone calls directly. They are almost always going to be scams. Instead, find the number of the institution in question and contact them directly using that number. But double, triple check that it is in fact their legitimate website. If, after following the step above, you still suspect identity theft has occurred, you might consider identity theft protection. Personally, I use and recommend Aura, but there are a lot of options out there. Now, a service like Aura cannot reverse identity theft. No service can. But it will give you access to their 24-7 threat resolution specialists who can help you do things like get specific next steps to follow in order to prevent further damage. They'll join you on calls with your bank and other financial institutions in order to clean up the mess. And importantly, they can act as emotional support at a time when you might really need it. If you are dealing with extensive identity theft, you should know that services like Aura and also Identity Guard, they actually offer you the ability to sign over power of attorney to the company so that they can clean up the identity theft mess on your behalf. But that's an aside. Whether you go with the service or not, you are going to want to immediately freeze or lock your credit at each of the three major credit bureaus. This is probably the single most important thing you can do, so pay close attention. First, you're going to issue a fraud alert. What a fraud alert does is it tells businesses to take extra steps in order to verify your identity before issuing any credit in your name. A fraud alert is going to last one year. You can renew it for up to seven years if necessary. And the great thing about placing a fraud alert, it's actually very easy to do. You only need to do it at one of the three bureaus. So you can call Equifax, you can call TransUnion, you can call Experian, but you only need to call one of them. And then by law, that credit bureau needs to notify the other credit bureaus that you have issued a fraud alert in your name. And if you need a phone number for those bureaus, check below. They're going to be in the video description. Now, when you initiate this fraud alert, you you are entitled to receive a free copy of your credit report. You can also get a free copy of your credit report right here. It's important you spend time reviewing it and make note of any unauthorized accounts that were open. We're going to deal with those at a later step. Next up, you're going to freeze your credit at each of the three bureaus. You can do this by phone. You can do this by email. It's going to take you about 10 to 20 minutes on average per bureau. And freezing your credit, unlike placing a fraud alert, needs to be done individually at each of the three bureaus. And once your freeze is in place, with very rare exceptions, your thief or thieves are going to be essentially unable to open new lines of credit in your name. This matters because the most common type of identity theft is somebody opening lines of credit in your name. And if you have a big purchase in the pipeline where a lender is going to need to access your files, don't worry. By law, the credit bureaus are required to unfreeze your account within an hour of you making a request to do so. These freezes are free, and for Americans at least, they do not affect your credit score at all. So even if you haven't been a victim of identity theft, I would still recommend you do this as a preventative measure. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, what's the difference between a credit freeze and a credit lock? The difference is this. Freezes are free. Credit locks usually cost money and are upsells from the credit agency, but they achieve essentially the same thing. Now, freezes might afford you additional legal protections, and they might be slightly harder for an identity thief to undo than a lock, but know that they're essentially the same thing, and I often use the two words freeze and lock interchangeably. You should also know that some identity theft protection services give you the ability to lock your credit files at at least one of the three big credit bureaus with the click of a button. So for instance, with Aura, discounts available below, you can lock and unlock your credit file at Experian by simply clicking a button in their dashboard. You don't need to actually call Experian to lock your file. I appreciate that because it definitely is a bit of a time saver. Now that your credit is frozen or locked, we're going to work on changing your login credentials. And a good password manager like Bitwarden or 1Password can really help with this. So you're definitely going to want a reputable password manager because when I say change your credentials, I'm not just talking about changing your password. I'm talking about changing your usernames and oftentimes email addresses as well. Think about it. If your user login for your bank is your first name, period, last name, that's going to be very easy information for a hacker to decipher. If you're using your same email address for social media, for public posts, as well as for your banking, well, that's something that a hacker, an identity thief can 
also reverse engineer. So that's why I recommend you use a service like ProtonMail in order to set up what are called email aliases and essentially create one that you use only for banking purposes. Ideally, you also have a non-public phone number linked to your bank accounts as well. The next thing you're going to do is create a recovery plan at identitytheft.gov. This is an incredible resource that can help you to create a customized recovery plan, so I highly recommend you check it out. Visit it, bookmark it, and use it to create a recovery plan that is custom tailored to you and your unique situation. Next up, we're going to report this identity theft to the FTC or Federal Trade Commission. You can do this via their website, which I've linked down below, or by phone. Now, the FTC is not going to investigate your case, but the report will go into the FTC's national database on identity theft. This database helps local law enforcement track and catch criminals. And by reporting to the FTC, what we're doing is we are essentially reducing our liability for any damages that stem from this identity theft. So you want to file this FTC report as soon as you discover that identity theft has occurred, ideally within 48 hours. Next up, we're filing a police report. Now, the local police probably will not be able to catch the thief. Kind of reminds me of the scene here in The Big Lebowski when, ah, that's a weird reference. But like when you filed the FTC report, you are working to create a paper trail, and this is going to be useful when you're talking with creditors. When creating this report, compile all available evidence. Debt collection notices, credit reports with false information. Once the report's created, make sure that you get a copy from your local PD for your own records. Now, if you get pushback from local law enforcement and they're unwilling to listen to your case, then you can use the law enforcement letter template that I've linked up in the video description below. So now your credit is frozen and you've placed fraud alert. Great, you're making good progress. Next up, we're going to deal with any unknown accounts on your credit report. At this point, you will have acquired a copy of your credit report, either from going to this URL here or by signing up for a service like Aura. And basically, you're going to go through that report and look for any unauthorized accounts that have been opened in your name. When you see them, you contact the fraud department of that particular business. You ask them to remove any unauthorized charges. And then, of course, you ask for them to close the account. They'll do this with any businesses, with any banks, with any creditors where fraudulent lines of credit have been opened in your name. Be sure to ask for written confirmation of account closure and that any fraudulent charges are waived. You might also have an account at NCTUE, that stands for the National Consumer Telecom and Utilities Exchange Data Report. That was a mouthful, but if you do have an account here, review it. Basically, this account is a record of any phone accounts, paid cable, and utility accounts that have been opened in your name. If you find any unusual activity on your account here, well, you know what to do. And here are some additional considerations you might want to take. Freeze your file at Check Systems. Contact the United States Postal Service and check whether there's been a mail forwarding order set up in your name. This is what identity thieves will do in order to intercept your mail. And while on their website, this is also a great time to sign up for the USPS's informed delivery program. Additionally, whether your identity has been stolen or not, I recommend you get an identity protection pin from the IRS. From now on, anybody filing taxes in your name, including of course yourself, will need to provide this pin. By setting up your identity protection pin, you make it that much more difficult for a thief to criminally intercept your tax refund. You can also review your social security work history and benefits by using the link down in the video description below. And if you discover that your number is being used fraudulently, you can contact your local SSA office. If after following all of the steps in this video, you're still having issues. Man, I'm first so sorry to hear that. That's so incredibly frustrating. In this case, consider contacting your state attorney general's office. Many states offer what is called an ID theft passport. This is a state issued document that you can use as proof of the fact that you are a victim of identity theft. Remember to claim your checklist in the video description below, and I'll see you in the next video.